in vitro assessment of cellular viability has become a generic approach, in addressing a vast range of biological questions in many areas of biomedical research. Here we will compare different methods of cell viability measurement. Cell viability is a determination of living or dead cells, based on a total cell sample. Viability measurements may be used for drug screening and cytotoxicity tests of chemicals. The definition of cellular activity is diverse, so that many index parameters can be used to measure cell viability, such as cellular metabolism, esterase function, MTT assay, apoptotic markers, annexine 5, cellular redox potential, membrane potential, proliferation rate, DNA content, mitochondrial function, membrane integrity and so on. All these methods can be used to test the cell viability. Though there are many different methods, the results always don't as are expected. For example, low repeatability of the results, the observed results differ from the actual measurements, even the number or type of cells both can influence the detection result. So choosing a proper assay method is important, which decide whether the expected outcome is valid or not. Viable cells can convert the substrate into product resulting in a colored or fluorescent product that can be detected with a plate reader, and the signal is directly proportional to the number of viable cells present. But the dying cells lose the conversion ability, that difference provides the basis for many of the commonly used cell viability assays. Tetrazoleum reduction, resazurin reduction, and protease activity assays all take advantage of this theory. The detections based on cell membrane integrity and related dye rejection have been widely accepted as a standard for cell viability testing. MTT Tetrazoleum Reduction Assay was the first homogeneous cell viability assay developed for a 96-well format that was suitable for high-throughput screening. Page-dependent cellular oxidoreductase enzymes in viable cells can reduce the tetrazoleum dimtt bromide to its insoluble form ozon, which has a purple color. Quantity of formazon is measured by recording changes in absorbance at 570 nm using a spectrophotometer. Under defined conditions, it can reflect the number of viable cells present. MTT assays can be used to measure cytotoxicity, loss of viable cells, or cytostatic activity, shift from proliferation to quiescence of potential medicinal agents and toxic materials. MTT has fewer steps and does not carry the added burden of radioactive waste disposal. But it's not suitable for suspending cells. Beyond that, it must be optimized for seeding amount and assay duration to obtain satisfactory results and precipitated protein and cellular debris present in the culture plate wells may interfere with the optical readings. For these improved tetrazoleum reagents, the usual protocol is simply to add them to the culture medium and read the absorption of the reduced product at an appropriate time. This approach eliminates a liquid handling step during the assay procedure, thus it obviously saves time and eliminates potential errors such as cell loss that can occur when removing culture medium and subsequently solubilizing cells. The MTS regions are more expensive than MTT. Though it is more convenient than MTT, it's not the most min time consuming method. CCK8 is another name WSD8. As a second generation water soluble tetrazoleum salt, Western Standard Time 8 has better soluble than MTS. WSD8 is reduced by dehydrogenases in cells to give an orange-colored product, formosan, which is soluble in the tissue culture medium. And the amount of the formosan digenerated by dehydrogenases in cells is directly proportional to the number of living cells. 
The procedure of CCKA does A is very easy. Just three steps and it doesn't need much time for incubation. CCKA doesn't need for mixing of components, and it is simple and rapid. In addition, it is non-radioactive. This method allows sensitive colorimetric assays for the determination of the number of viable cells in cell proliferation and cytotoxicity assays. Sulfur hodamin B SRB assay was developed in 1990, one of the most widely used methods for in vitro cytotoxicity screening. The assay relies on the ability of SRB to bind to protein components of cells. SRB is a bright pink aminoxanthine dye with two sulfonic groups that bind to basic amino acid residues components of cells under mildly acidic conditions, and dissociate under basic conditions. As the binding of SRB is stoichiometric, the amount of dye extracted from stained cells can be used as a proxy for cell mass directly, and the amount of bound dye is proportional to the cell mass. The protocol can be divided into four main steps, preparation of treatment, incubation of cells with treatment of choice, cell fixation and SRB staining. This assay can be used in an efficient and sensitive manner to test chemotherapeutic drugs or small molecules in adherent cells. It also has applications in evaluating the effects of gene expression modulation, as well as to study the effects of MRNA replacement on cell proliferation. Application of the SRB assay is limited to manual or semi-automatic screening due to the multiple washing and drying steps which are not amenable to automation. Compare these different methods, CCK8 can apply for most conditions and the next is MTS. As for MTT, it's still the most widespread method. Though the process of SRB is complicated, cell culture played at different time points can be determined at the same time which is convenient. Different cell viability assays are provided by Creative BioArray. Creative BioArray has more than 10 years of experience in cell biology. And we have performed thousands of cell line testing services for clients in Biopharma under CGMP and validated the current itch guidelines. We look forward to working with you in the near future.